everyone, today we are creating a drop down view. This is helpful in games where you need to show your player a list of objects on stage but only when the player clicks on a drop down option. I have an animated set of costumes in a sprite ready which I have imported. It is to transition from the drop down button to the drop down menu. You can make it too simply by making the roundness smaller in each adjacent costume and bringing them closer to touch the edges to finally transist to a simple box. You can see that we have a smoothness glide block ready. If you want to see the short tutorial on this, then click the white button at the top right corner of the playing video. There are two styles of this drop down menu, starting off with the first one. I will take in a broadcast receive block and make a new broadcast called start drop down selection. This is because you might not want the drop down button to show up the moment your project starts, so you can control when it shows up simply by putting in the broadcast block at the place of code where you want it to show up. We will make it hide when the flag is clicked and let it show up when it receives the broadcast. You can see that we have put our sprite at a convenient position where the drop down button looks cool. We will make it go there when it receives the message too. To give it a cool effect, I will make it set its ghost effect to 40 at the start Till the screen is tapped, we will make it so that it becomes clear when hovered by the mouse and back to its faded state. After the repeat until mouse down loop, in fact, when the drop down is clicked, we will animate the sprite to a convenient position according to how big the content will be inside the menu. And then when the mouse pointer is no more touching the sprite, it will animate back to the position where the button originally was. We will make a new broadcast message called animate and broadcast it before the sprite animates to open the menu and before it animates to bring the button back to its original. When the sprite receives the message, we will make it repeat the number of times it needs to reach the last costume from the first costume. Now if it is receiving the message when the costume is already the last, then you want to repeat till it is the first costume by doing switch costume to costume number minus one. In order to make it understand when to process which piece of code, I will put the repeat 10 block next, repeat 10 next costume block in an if costume put one block and the repeat 10 switch costume to costume number minus one block in its else part. We will make it switch to the first costume at the first. Oh wow, it is looking pretty cool already. Here we import a sprite with many characters. These are just for example and you need to put the things which you need to show in the menu. We also have a scroll bar which we will come to work with later. Here too, we have hidden the sprite when the flag is clicked. When it receives the broadcast message, it will repeat the number of times it needs to reach the last object we want to display and clone the adjacent costumes in the meanwhile. We will switch 
the first costume when the menu is launched. After the cloning is done, we will switch it to the scroll bar. Now, we want the scroll bar to show up only when the menu is open. So, we will put an if block with the condition that Y position of drop down sprite is equal to the value of the Y position when the sprite stays open. We will make the scroll bar show when this is true and else hide. Finally, we will put all of this inside the repeat until block. We want that we will make the sprite change x by a particular value to move on after creating each clone. When the clones are created, x position shall remain the same of where the clone was created. We will set the size of the clone to its maximum before the go to block and we will reset the size after it. This trick is used so that the clone doesn't get stuck at the edge and it can go beyond it. To make the clone remember its size, I'll make a variable for this sprite only and set that variable to the size of the clone instantly when it is created. We will put this variable in the set size to value after the go to block in the repeat until loop. Oh, and also we want to show up the clones when they are created. Now coming to the scroll bar actions. We will create a variable called scrollx. We will make the bar wait until it is being clicked or the menu is no more open and after that we will put an if statement to test if the scroll bar and inside it till the mouse isn't held down it will set the x position to mouse x and set the scroll x variable to the scroll bars x position when it is being shown We will set the size to 100 when switching to the scroll bar and set it to 40 or any size you want your objects to be before creating the clones. We will also make the scroll bar go to front when it is showing up. In order to make the clones remember their X position, we need to make a variable called myX for this sprite only and set it to the clone's X position when the clone is created. Now in the place of the go to X X position, we will make it go to myX minus 155, the difference of 155 and scroll X subtracted from 155 less than myX. What this does is it gives an output of how near the scroll bar is to the X position 155. The much nearer, the closer the result of 155 minus 155 minus scroll X would be. 155 minus 155 minus 10. Finally, when we subtract this from the X position of the clone, it gives us 10.
moving to the other way this drop down response can be formed, we can replace the repeat until block with a wait until touching mouse pointer and put the set ghost effect to 40 block before the wait until block and the clear graphics set block after it. It's almost done. But to make sure that if by chance the menu closes while we are dragging the scroll bar, we will do wait until not mouse down or Y position of drop down sprites is equal to that of when it is open. Now we need to make this drop down engine stop at a point systematically. For this, we will create a variable called exit drop down menu and set all the repeat ended conditions to exit drop down menu equals 1 and we will also add an all exit drop down menu equals 1 to all wait until conditions. It's done and it's working perfect. Thanks for staying with us till the end of the video. Like the video and subscribe to my channel. Coming soon with another video. Till then, bye bye.